2. Extracts from the book Time Loop Chronicles continued. Old script, new information. Day 3 Mystery of the Bloodlines. We took a break while the chief wanted to have some time to prepare himself for what he called a very important lesson. I was having a problem with the concept of this time loop. And although I have never been that scientific I realize science plays a great part in this world. Which could help reveal more on this time loop enigma. The chief continued. What I want to discuss today is extremely important in that it is the basis of everything that is occurring in this world. Have you ever heard of the story of Silistus Pater? No friend. Oh. Let me call you chief. It feels easier for me. But no. I do not believe I have heard of this story. There is a story among my people spoke long ago about Divinum Spiritus. This is a saga of a powerful link that certain people on earth have with the heavens and beyond into the invisible realm. This connection can only come from the soul. However, long ago the soul lost something very important about its internal reality. And ever since then it has been seeking for this connection externally. Completely forgetting about the Divinum Spiritus and how it only operates internally. Silistus Pater was the one that created the key in helping the soul to remember that connection. However, the only way to access this key is one must eat it. Therefore, Silistus Pater of the Divinum Spiritus sent this key down to earth in a form that was so unique the world would never be the wiser. Only the true souls of the Divinum Spiritus would eventually realize what it is and then eat it. Chief, what is it that they were to eat? It is called the Painem Vitae. How does one find this special food? The key was placed into a substance called Sanquis. If you successfully locate the key, you would be able to access the Painem Vitae. Do you know where this key exists? Can we find it? The key is called Verum in Sanguinem you lost me. Verum in Sanguinem means Truth in the blood. You mean there is something in our blood that contains the key? Are we vampires now that we must drink blood? Yuck. Not exactly. What it means is The carrier of the pain MVT comes from a certain blood. Meaning from a certain tribe of people. Now listen closely to the story that was passed down long ago. Once upon a time before the world was when it became known that a special key was being created. A malevolent entity known as Sol Malum decided to create a copy of this key and offer it instead to the people. He called it the Panis Veninum. This copy was so close to the actual key that most never knew they were not eating pain MVT. But instead, Panis Veninum. What would happen if you ate the wrong one? It would slowly sedate the soul and recondition it to cause it to forget everything it once knew. Sadly though, nearly everyone took of the Panis Venenum and completely forgot about the pain MVT. And thus, the entire world was blinded and forgot not only who they were, but where they came from. It was then decided by Silistus Pater to send the key to one individual to be the key holder and then entrust that person to send it down through their children until the time when the pain MVT could materialize into a form where everyone that was blinded would then recognize it and then eat it. The key was given to an individual that would be successful in passing it down through many generations. It was almost like magic. No matter what happened the key was passed from one child to another until the grand deception occurred. Every time a father was to pass this key down to the correct son, he did so towards the end of his life. This would assure the key remained safe. However, over the years there was so much intrigue and deception and counter keys that it was nearly impossible to keep the key safe from the wrong hands. Then one day, when one of the children who was the firstborn and rightful heir of the key was to have it transferred from the father to the son, the father was tricked. What had happened was twin sons were born. And although they were twins, they were not identical. 
the second born son conspired with his mother to deceive the father and transfer the key to the incorrect son the second born. The father was very old and his eyes could no longer see. The day when the father decided to transfer the key. That same day the mother conspired with the son to trick the father into believing the second born son was the chosen key holder. Since the father could not see to verify the truth. He succumbed to the black magic and he passed the key to the wrong son. There was one major problem though. The key was not physical it was encoded into the rightful air and no matter what happened. The key would always remain with the true inheritor. This is something that Sol Malam never could not grasp. When the twins were born. The second son was a progeny of Sol Malam. Therefore, they appeared and looked differently. And the key that the second son was given and then passed down throughout the generations had nothing to do with the pain MVT. It of course was the panis venenum. How can twin sons be the offspring of two different sources? It is called DNA manipulation and source integration, which I will explain in a future discussion. It is possible for a woman to have twins from two different fathers. Let me return to the topic. Unbeknownst to the firstborn son. He still had the correct key and now his betraying brother had the fake one. The problem was the world was told a lie. That the false key had then become the true key. And the legitimate key became the erroneous key. And thus. The beginning of all confusion. Manufactured deceptions were unveiled to make people believe that the carriers of the false key were the chosen ones. And the carriers of the true key were damned to oblivion and completely forgotten about throughout all of history. Of course. This angered the brother who felt he was betrayed out of his royal birthright. He and his progeny were forced to separate from the clan and move to a new location on the earth. The second born son who was carrying the false key went on to glory and greatness. His progeny went on to become great nations upon this earth that still exist to your day. It all began when the second son named Prodotor had 12 children. Two of his sons of the 12 went on to become key holders. Chief, I thought there was only one key. Could these two have the same? key given to different sons or were they different keys? It is true. There was only one key. But when Sol Malam added the false key he decided what the heck, let's make two of them. The one key he gave he passed it through royal blood from one of the initial sons. And the second key was passed down for national greatness through a later born son. What is the difference? The royal key was given to those who would then rule over great nations. And the second key was given to those who would become the great and powerful nations. What happened to the child who carried the correct key? We are not sure if the child was aware that he still contained the code of the correct key. Whether he did or didn't it was still successfully passed down through generations. His people went on to become the people in the Greek world of Turkey of the past. Unlike his defrauding brother who was named Prodotor. The one that had become vast and powerful over the nations due to this trickery. His brother that was named Verum who happened to be the correct key holder. Was never given greatness. Never given glory or power or anything. Yet he still carried the correct key and it was passed down throughout the ages until a specific bloodline son was born. Finally. This chosen offspring of this long lineage was born and then given many titles. But only a few believed he was the key holder. Most did not agree. He was different. He was unique. He didn't fit into any of the other clan types of either Prodotor or Verum where this had all begun. He was not a warrior. He did not seek power and glory unto himself. 
He was peaceful and loving and he wanted above all else to restore the key to the lost souls. He was a child that carried the original key given by Silistus Pater. And this child along with his many titles was named Painem Vitae. I am still a tad confused chief. I thought Painem Vitae was something we were to eat. How do we eat a person? Good question, that was also something many have asked down through the ages because they didn't understand the key. What we had come to learn is the key was encoded in the blood of a certain tribe or race of people. And within those people, every generation the key was handed to one son who had been chosen to carry the key in his blood. By the time it came down to pain and vitae, he became the key in the flesh. Does this mean only one son chosen in every generation could have the key just to lead to the one? I am not sure how successful this entire operation was. So Pain MVT became the key. But what about all the other souls who were blinded that had lost the key from before the world? How do they receive the key if it is only passed down to the one? Again. Another excellent question. Understand. The key was simply in the blood. But the blood nor the flesh is Pain MVT. Then what is it? Pain MVT is the one that will transfer the key to all of the lost souls. Every soul who became blind and lost can now be given the Pain MVT so they can eat it. It isn't just meant for the one. It is meant for the many, it is meant for all true souls. When the false key was added it also went through a blood lineage. And one named Panis Venenum took upon the name Pain MVT. Sol Malum wanted to make sure that Panis Venenum became the chosen one under a false NOM de plume. However, he wanted people to worship him as a deity. And to believe he was the only one that had access to the Pain MVT. The people all over the world were being seduced to follow a lie under the guise of it being the truth. It was then decided to lock all souls together and track them into the time loop. It was hoped that all souls would forever forget where they came from and who they were and this was accomplished by giving them the Panis Venenum. The time loop was created after Pain MVT was murdered to substitute the Panis Venenum for the Pain MVT. He was murdered chief. Sadly, he was. Was the key passed down before he died to one of his sons as was the tradition? No. And that was the indirect cause of all deception from the beginning on earth. When the real key stopped being passed down, the false key that was being passed down continued. And when the time loop was created, this has become the only key people understood that which they can recognize. The great lie became the substitute for truth and it has caused great confusion. Oh wow. Does this mean the true souls will never access the true key? Then. Fortunately. Silistus Pater was much smarter than Sol Malum. The truth is. The blood was not the power it was in the pain MVT and that was the true encoding all along. You see there never was a key in the blood. Say what? The key was only to distract the enemy away from discovering the truth. And what pray tell was that? The chief begins to laugh hysterically along with all his friends. It must have lasted for three minutes. I felt like I was the brunt of a bad yarn. I couldn't figure out why this was so funny. Finally, the chief composed himself and said these words. The key as Sol Malum believed was never placed into the blood. For the flesh and blood are meaningless. The key was inserted into all true souls. I am totally confused, how could that happen? It means at the death of the pain MVT, at that very moment it occurred. All keys were activated in all true souls. Now the key must be internalized by the soul's avatar. By eating the pain MVT and then it will unlock the doors of this prison to set everyone free. The chief told us to get some rest before he would explain anymore. He said. Mysteries should be revealed slowly. 
one at a time. Or else we would become scatterbrained.